homeless and balanced vibration to everyone, and thank you for tuning in once again to the 2012 show. It's great to be here. Of course, my name is James Bomar. I'm the developer of The Resistance and the author of The Code to the Matrix. And today we have a really action-packed show lined up for you. Of course, it's me and the panel online today. I have Weston Crystal. I think Luis may be calling in later and a couple more Resistance members. And, of course, we are dedicated to getting your questions answered here in 2012 about the expansion that has already arrived and ready for you to receive. Of course, I'm broadcasting live from the jungle here in Costa Rica. We've definitely relocated, so you'll hear a lot more of the nature sounds going on in the background. So just be aware of what that is if you do hear some animal noises. Today's show is, of course, titled uh, Intraterrestrials, Cyclic versus Linear Experience or existence. And this is going to clear a lot of things up for people in order to get them to understand exactly what they need to do here to break out of a lot of the molds that they've been stuck in in order so that they can benefit off of what's going on right now. And I will say first that you have to understand and understand that well, actually, before I start, let me uh, see if I'm coming through clearly. So at this point, I'm going to ask someone to notify me in the chat box of Blog Talk Radio through text if they can hear me loud and clear, and then we'll go ahead and get started here. Okay, once again, I'm asking someone if they could type in the Blog Talk Radio chat box if they could hear me clear then I can continue with the show. We just do a really quick sound test. Okay, so once that they can hear me clear, so we're off. Basically, how this works is, is that you have to understand that what you were born with is what you needed. What you experience after birth is what you wanted. So let's just get that straight. And that's why there's all these songs that say, be careful what you wish for and all this stuff, because they're not just talking about this life. They're talking about subsequent lives that continue with fulfillment of things that you've desired through past lives. So when you get here to earth, you didn't come with a religion. A religion is something that you picked up along the way. So a religion can just can be just like a car, or as I say, an arc, because it's an anagram. It could take you to expansive places, or it could get broke down and never work but either way, you don't need a car. You could always walk. Even though it'll take you longer, a car is a device. It's something used to slow, to, to do the repetitious work that you would have to do normally for you so that you can spend your time doing something else. So what religion is supposed to be is a body of knowledge that has been gathered by many adherents and then they put that body of knowledge together so that anyone that comes to read it fast forwards themselves through whatever state is being explained. So in this case, it's the spiritual state. So what we find is with the religion is because it was not given to us at birth, then it must always stay upgraded, just like a car. Meaning you can sit a Model T next to a Bugatti Veyron and begin to notice several differences, the upgrades that have happened as it has been perfected. So we need to understand that if you're going to do religions, at least do the current one, because the old religions are going to always be outdated. And I want people to always think about that and what I just said in regards to how religions become outdated for the time and they continuously become upgraded as if they are programs and so if you're running on, let's say, Islam 4.0, you may have to upgrade to New Age 8.0 before you can start to comprehend the more expansive things, because the more expansive things don't even really involve religions. Religions are the steps that are necessary to get a person to come to full realization of what exactly they're even looking at when they get into inner space. Now, we've seen many individuals run out in space, and all that has come back from space, as we see, is continuous lies, or they say NASA, never a straight answer. What has always come back from these shuttles being launched off is never really much. Notice that there's never been anything amazing that they've bought back from going into space. 
They never say, oh, we have an extraterrestrial on board with us. We found him laying on the ground in another planet. He was almost dying. And then we want all of humanity to get involved as we revitalize him and then get the information or revitalize it and then get the information of what it is and let it be, become aware of us, etc. So nothing ever really happens out there. However, when you talk to individuals that have gone in there, meaning inner space, then they got a bunch to tell you. They always are talking about other beings and different things that they've discovered. Because there's a knowledge that there is nothing really out there. It's already decayed. And that's why they say when the light from space finally gets to us, it's probably from a star that burned out long ago, right? So they tell us these kind of things. But the reality is, is that how it really works is, is that our planet has several inner layers to it. And I believe this is the original schematics. This is what the original schematics that you're seeing when it comes to Atlant with the cities of Atlantis. Because you have these several layers. Now, before you can even visualize these layers, I need you first to visualize the size of Earth, which you can verify. They say many of these planets are huge, but you haven't been able to verify that. So let's just go with where we are. If you wanted to start driving from, let's say, the East Coast to the West Coast, you can get, in the United States, you can get really fast how expansive the world is. And you're just in one small part of it. So when you think of how big the Earth is, you need to start thinking about how big is the inside of Earth then? Okay? Because... When you start to separate the inside of Earth in layers, then you get the intraterrestrials, the beings that have already lived and existed. They are not on the surface because, as we talked about, the surface is the most dangerous place on any type of system like this because you're exposed to old emissions. You're exposed to all sorts of things, but in this, more towards the center where cell phones don't work too well, et cetera, you're not as exposed to the, the brain waves and frequencies and essences and, and scent smells and sounds and all the things that are trying to act upon you to get more realization from you and to get more realization through themselves. So when you're in the center, what you find is nothing different than when you look at the surface of Earth and you have races of people that are still 100% in their bloodline. So whether we would take a trip to India, whether we would take a trip to China, whether we would take a trip to Russia, we will find that in Africa, we will find that these the people have maintained their bloodline. And only in places such as parts of Europe, such as the United States, even in Canada, you find the colonization. You find the actual mixing of the species in order to create new species. Okay? This is also, if you were looking at it in a laboratory, you'd be creating a monster, for better lack of words. You're mixing a lion with a serpent and a bird. And this is because these tribes of people that exist on the surface have a totem or animal that, in, in flora and fauna that is indigenous to their five base structure, meaning how their bodies were created were from these counterparts. And if people don't think that that's true, then why are people born with tails? If the mammalian body that we're using is not a composite itself, why do we find such similarities with the body and animals in nature? So let's go beyond now. We come to that conclusion about the physical body and its relationship to the matter. So the next level is, is to identify the spirit because we're not just matter. We have another part of us that is far more mystical. However, most people haven't figured out anything to do with ma'at or ma or matter or what the planet really is, its story, its secrets. Why do you think you have large races of beings running around the surface of this planet that don't even understand their connection with the flora and fauna and what the flora and fauna could do, meaning the plants, the animals, the herbs, etc., to upgrade their visual perception, mental, spiritual, physical, visual perception of everything? So what it's been is when we say that we're alone, 
this has kept us alone. Remember, we are living in a reality where the controllers of the reality, the people who, who dictate and program into the reality, have told us, you're alone. There's no one here but the human species. So in that thought, it creates a firewall around your mind to keep you impenetrable from outside forces that always existed. And this is no different than the God of the Old Testament saying, Thou shalt have no other God before me. I am the only God. Now, what is the big fuss about if there's no other God? Why would you need to bring that up? Obviously, there's other gods, but what is being said is that I don't want you dealing with the other gods. Only deal with me. Okay? So, it's the same thing. We've been told, I don't want you dealing with other intraterrestrials. You just deal with me. This is what society has, has sent out as a message. So, of course, that's the beginning of a circle. Because that's where things start. Because once that Edict, decree, bull, Aries, horn runs forth. As you even honk your horn in the car, it alerts people. Once it runs forth, now things are beginning. And that's why the question was uh, in the chat box today about whether our astro the astronomical things that are taking place in our reality today can give us guidelines to what is going to happen in 2012. This was by Karate. 100%, or I believe white knight, one of the two. But 100%, it will tell us what exactly is going to happen and what to expect because we are cyclic, not linear, meaning we are nonlinear beings. I'm going to prove this to you in the simplest way. Everything that we deal with, with our aura, our planet spinning, our universe spinning, elliptical orbits, sun up, sun down, is cyclic, okay? Linear is when you think of things in a straight line timeline, like 600 B.C., 6,000 B.C., life began. And then somewhere way out here, 25,560 A.D., life will end. And then people act like they, when they accept that in their mind, that line, it, it's a dividing line, then you start living life in segments rather than one large experience. So that you can imagine if you had three to four hundred years here on earth to learn everything. What kind of person would you be now? So I'm coming to tell you that you do have three, four hundred, five hundred, six hundred years here on earth to learn everything. Now, here's another thing. Many complain that there's not enough time in the day. But if you could imagine exploring what at least nature has to offer in what was like a short yesterday, you can see how if you could be allowed to do that every day of your life, you would gain a lot of knowledge. Now, this is not... I'm not saying at all that people that live in the jungle and live in indigenous places, etc., have this huge state of consciousness because there's also the will that has to be bolted onto that. And this is why the Western world is responsible for creating wills. It's responsible, because the W is horns, it's responsible for creating a reason why you need to do it. Because other than that, in fauna or in bliss, which is, as Dan Winter points out, the original state of us as, as beings we remain in this bliss-like state, in order to come out of that, this is what has been created. So that you can act out what you're seeing into a physical reality so that others can benefit from it. Because what happens is, is if you become a perfect internal manifester, Still inside of your, your internal world, this means it's basically bliss. You can put yourself into a state where you feel like there is nothing that you need. You have pure energy supply. You know, you're just sitting there and you're radiating. So the opposite state of that, obviously, would be to come into the physical world and to break your concentration from bliss 
to actually act it out in a physical way in the reality. And this is why it answers actually the next question that was presented, which was, uh, this was by Karate, when your mind is busy, how do the adepts personally enter a meditative state? Then there's another question that's right after that that says, as ascension now is preferred to be done in an environment where you can interact with others, I ask this for selfless and selfish and selfish reasons. I'm still finding moving to complete silence the easiest, most natural, and most direct route, basically, to the meditative state. And you're exactly right. But now we need another kind of meditation. It's more advanced for the meditator, so it's going to benefit all the way around. And it also allows the person to interact with the physical reality. This is the image that, let's say, the old man who's very versed in Wu Wei and Tai Chi and things that allow them to maneuver and manipulate energy. So you have this huge, bulky character who's got all these muscles and screaming, and he's running at the old guy because there's a little bit of distance. And he's running at the old guy, and he has this plans to get his hands on this old man and to tear him apart. And meanwhile, the old man is there, and he's still reading a book. He's acting like he doesn't even see this huge thing running at him. But the moment that it gets close enough, he then neutralizes it, then, with its own energy. This is the actual visual image of the adept who can meditate while still active in the reality, meaning what they're doing is like a zen. And you'll see this when you, in the zen in the zone. You'll see this when certain basketball players can continuously hit the, hit the uh, hoop because they're actually in a meditative state, but they're running full court. So this is what is needed in the advanced level of the depth is for them to be in the meditative state and to run full court. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring on my panel host. I did kind of take off a little bit there, and um, we have today's show scheduled for an hour and a half. I'm not sure if that we're going to go that long, but of course we're going to get a lot of questions answered. So I'm going to go ahead and check in on the line and see if Wes and Crystal are online. Wes and Crystal, are you there? Hello, we are here. Hey, good day. Good day, good day. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing exceptionally well. It's Sunday, and there's a lot of energy moving through. We've moved into a different space, and I just really have been encouraged to tell people more than ever that the time is now, that whatever you wanted to receive out of this, all of this TV watching, all this watching the future, even when a kid flying a little spaceship through the air with your hand, all of the when, – when a woman desiring to see the fulfillment – of your entire experience here on the dimension, all of that is available. What is necessary, though, is the proper deprogramming and getting in the know. And so that, of course, is where I'm at today. I'm just bringing it. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we feel the same way over here. Um, yeah, the time is now. There's there's no better way to put that. Um, you know, there's there's just so. But the last question that you asked to uh, charade there, I just wanted to add to that too, just from my personal experience that we've had with our meditations. Um, when I first started out, I really found that concentrating on every aspect of your breath um, was a really good way to enter a meditative state and just remain really focused on every aspect. So every time you breathe in fully and then breathe out, um, and just really you know concentrate on the balance between your inhale and exhale. Um, also, just training yourself to be kind of in the present moment awareness by letting go of everything that, you know, defines you is really um, kind of freeing in itself and helps you to kind of allow your mind to quiet and prepare for the stillness. Um, also, too, in my, in my meditative state, um, you know, my mind often still has thoughts, but it's the practice of kind of allowing those thoughts to be there but not really attaching to them and building onto them. So, like, I use a visualization trick where I kind of imagine each of my thoughts as they come into my mind as kind of like a flowing stream. And my thoughts travel down the stream kind of around rocks and meander around, and they kind of leave. So it's kind of just cyclic in my mind, um, you know, because the mind really wants to hold on and kind of be in control a lot of the time. So, you know, a certain level of surrendering kind of has to take place within you, I find, 
And successful meditation is kind of achieved in steps. So, you know, you kind of have to adhere to each step every time you meditate. And then soon the process becomes second nature and your mind just kind of is trained on what to do. And you'll find that, you know, getting into that meditative state will just be easier and easier. So all that's really required is just some, you know, some diligent practice and patience. And, you know, as you know, like, you know, there's, there's many different forms of meditation as well, like, like active meditations, which I often do. So, you know, that can kind of involve you maybe taking a walk out in nature, connecting with the Earth's energy, and just, you know, being in that present moment awareness, uh, you know, with little to no mind chatter. So I often meditate, too, with uh, the different frequencies that we have on the site, uh, with the somatics. And I was actually just saying to you the other day, Seven, on Wednesday's uh, life coaching chats on Skype, uh, that, that those uh, NASA Voyager torrent that you linked to us on the site has been really helpful uh, to me lately. And basically, if you've never heard those, they're just recordings that the Voyager, NASA Voyager, took around the different celestial bodies in the solar system. And uh, they're just really effective at putting you into your own personal universe, I found. So there's lots of options when it comes to meditation. It just kind of depends on what, what works best for you. So, you know, my advice yeah. would be to try a bunch of methods, you know. Definitely. You know what came to mind while you were mentioning that, just another really big epiphany. When I would suppose since distance is time, and let's just get it clear, it doesn't have to become physics or anything, but distance is time because, of course, if you are going to your friend's house, depending upon how fast you're moving, there's a certain time between when you get there. And if you notice that when a space shuttle takes off into space, where do you really think it's going? Now, if we've seen the entire universe itself as an onion, and this is why even onion etymologically shows you what the design of the universe is, but if you see it as an onion, what you see them going to is other layers of time where there's time belts that they can park into and either gather information, alter or do something of that nature. So the whole idea of going deeper into the planet or outer space is time travel itself. Because if you have the proper receptors, which they definitely do, you can pick up all information. And so when you look at, if they even say that the light that is coming to us from space, many of them have burned out a long time ago, because the light is still coming, it carries the information, i.e. the pattern of whatever that admission is that's supposedly long gone. So people have to really get into this information to understand exactly why this, the controllers in the society, for better lack of words, have such a plethora of knowledge because they just go right to the knowledge. And that's what we also have to get used to doing. We have to get used to basically erasing our minds from all of these different states that don't equal real progress. And understand, progress connects into a physical reality. So if you don't see that yet, it means that you need to push more into the universe to make a discovery because you're going to need the connections. As, we, as I've been feeling more than ever that what we're really experiencing in the world right now, we need to establish personally for ourselves more connection with more wiser parts of this entire cycle. And we have access to that because in a core drilling, as you see, what they do with a core drilling is they take a tube and they stick it all the way through the earth. And then when they pull it out, they take what is in the center of that tube and they read it. So what we're having the opportunity to do is to send our tube, i.e., a uh, white line, or, or silver line from the back of the head, we take our tube, our wormhole, and plunge it through this universe and then start reading the timeline for more experience. See, some people are reading the timeline for what's going to happen, <laughs> never realizing that that's kind of futile since you're what's happening. The timeline is to be created by you, not to be read so you know where you're going to be going. If you're reading something else's timeline, you're only understanding where it's going to be going, not necessarily where you're going to be going unless you choose to sync yourself with that, meaning to sync up with that. And that's what we talked about with mantras. If you look at, there's one book, I, I do forget exactly the title, but I will pull it up. It was an amazing book. I think it was The Science of Sound. 
something like this, and it was written by a yogi. But what was explained, if you could just skip over all of the mantras and things inside of there, because he did, the, the gentleman who translated the book explained it in a very, very direct translation that what a mantra really is is that you have people across the universe saying certain words. And those words never come back void, meaning that they never get stuck in the void without finding something to bounce off of and return. So when you say those words, it links you with those waves. And that's how many have established connections with other beings that correspond to these mantras. So as you can see, this, is, this becomes very important for us to, to know because it gives us all the explanations of why, even in our society, you have certain words and certain names that have this power associated to them, but it doesn't mean that that power is the end-all, finish-all. And in fact, what I've seen more than anything that I'm the most disgruntled about within the spiritual world is when certain factions use symbolism and have never ventured out to explain what that symbolism means to their adherents. So you have factions that are using crescent moons and using pentagrams, and they use that as their general symbol, but never during any show do they say what this, this pentagram and what this crescent moon means. And that's what gives me an uneasiness about many of the individuals that are still number one in the spiritual world as far as information and how they're giving information and how people are receiving that information from them. I will encourage people to understand that there are many connections. There's great levels of power that haven't even been experienced yet by humanity. So in many cases... People who know how to display a fraction of that power generally bring anyone that's around them that doesn't know that they can do that too under their sway. So the resistance is, of course, here to activate you, to show you how you can not only be like many of us that are, that are expanding entire states of consciousness, but even go beyond that. Everyone has a particular gift embedded with them, and that gift, that treasure belongs to you. And it is just our obligation here on this planet. We've taken it as our obligation, our responsibility, to let you understand how to access that in this time where we feel like you would need it most. Because if you notice, in the cartoon series Thundercats, you will see Lionel's sword has a third eye in the hilt, but it only activates in danger. When he's about to experience something, it only activates then. And then he spends most of his time trying to figure out how to get the sword to activate without that particular situation occurring. So there you have Thundercats. Why? Because there is a sphinx out in the desert in Egypt. But there is one so big in the Everglades that the paw of it, the sphinx in Egypt, can fit into. So now you start to realize why these cat-like beings were used in Avatar, because Phi, which also means cat, the feline, was a heavy level of the mammalian populating system that just came through here that birthed or incarnated many of the physical beings into this reality. That's why they say the Egyptians used the cats, because the cats and the, they say the pigs, the cats and the pigs were one state from being basically what we are. They were going to be in the next incarnation. Their souls had developed enough to become the first level of humans. As you see, humanity being upgraded 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. And if people don't want to believe that this is happening, which is where their religion has them stuck, they believe that if they accept this kind of information, then they become Luciferian, Satanic, and these two get rolled together, this Lucifer and Satan are the same being, which they're not. And then a whole mess is made of the knowledge that is needed to access the gates and the portals to get out of the pen. Meaning that the pen, as you see in a penitentiary jail, there are gates holding each prisoner in. To get that gate open, you need a key. Now, there's only a few individuals holding those keys, mainly not the prisoners, even though some prisoners even have keys. So when you want to figure out what is really going on in this universe, look at your world. Look at your innerverse. 
don't venture out too far in the things la la land, as they call it. That's la is another name for the moon. Don't venture out too far in the la la land and start anchoring yourself to clouds <laughs> and anchoring yourself to smoke. Basically, there's no foundation for you as you become mystical. And stay connected with your mother, the ground, the foundation. Like many people have seen in their lives when everything got the worst, where'd they go back? Mama's house. She'll always take you in, in most cases. So this is where we're at. We have to expand beyond this quickie. As the, the humanity is like a quickie. They just want a quick gratification of their organism. And then they're off to something else. The moment that it doesn't please them anymore, they don't have they don't take the responsibility for what was created in that connection. Before they're off trying to experience the connection with someone else. You see, these this is Nephilim archonic behavior. So that's why we have so much to still learn from the individuals that have plunged themselves deep into confusion. Because in not examining them while accepting who they are and being around them, we have gotten ourselves lodged into a muck. But now humanity is rising out of that. So the symbology of this phoenix rising from the ashes is very simple and not Luciferian at all, but just the idea that there are many different creatures that don't exist anymore, meaning different states of mind. Whatever happened to the noble person? Whatever happened to the good man? Whatever happened to many of these beautiful beings that are now extinct? Because everything is an energy, people. When you want to put mass around it, then you need to have access to understanding how math works. And that's why the entire religious structure was the Brotherhoods and Sisterhoods of Ma, which became known as the Brotherhoods and Sisters of the Snake or the Bird. Okay, depending on what level you have reached. One crawling on the dust of the ground, the lowest level, while the other one is aerial. So this is simple now. We have to wake up out of these dualistic programs that keep us from just taking this information, closing certain doors of our confusion, and then allowing our spiral to flow free with energy. Now, like I said, these are words. They're words put together very well, but words nonetheless. Action is what is the moving component to this. Like if you notice, even with uh, many motors and things, they have to be kick-started. And then once they're kick-started, then they go. So many are wondering, how is all of this going to come about for them? Like, I seem to be stuck. you got to make that leap. You have to change. You have to aggressively change frequency. It's very simple. To do that, you can either switch your external environment, as those who practice and understood in DNA for a long time have showed that the DNA is most affected by the environment, or you have to take the element that is the guide through frequency transfer, meaning you take a jump gate. DMT is a jump gate. Ayahuasca is a jump gate. You take the jump gate, and no one can tell you what you're going to experience because each person has been through a, a unique sequence of events. So religions become useful, useless. And let me correct that. Religious... Religions become yeah, useful in certain ways, but useless in many more ways. And the way religions become useless is when, a, just like a medicine, it's administered to people who do not react to it. Meaning that if you're trying to cure a cold, there's certain things that work for people's colds. And then you can give that same thing to a person, and it won't work for them. So you have to find something else. You don't just give up and say, well, I think... If they can't take that medicine, then they're dead. <laughs> what kind of physician are you? So this is the new thing, working with physicality, understanding how to utilize your abilities to heal and to repair and regenerate the part of nature that you correspond to, then gaining access 
a key, a bridge over into other parts of yourself in order to keep maintaining, okay, maintain the system. Because we talked about perfection is something that has to constantly go on. It's, it's like a spinning ball. If you don't, if you, if you mess it up for a moment, it comes into wobble. And until it corrects itself, it's in a wobble. It's not perfect. So perfect is something you have to constantly maintain. And we found this out because the main story going on the planet is about God creating these angels of perfection. <laughs> If it, if in the Zohar and in many of the deeper books, it, it goes into extensive parsecs of how the angels are built. And, the, of course, the ones who call themselves builders and masons, they, they pride themselves on the perfection of the building until it crumbles. Okay? Because that has to be maintained. I heard a statement in a rap song the other day, I was in passing, and it says, if we ball together, we fall together. Well, I guess that would be right according to etymology because a ball is a lord. So many of the balls or lords fail. So this shows you in conclusion, my people, that things can be created to be perfect and then still end up in an imperfected state and then still put themselves back into a perfected state. It's a growth process. The programs have been making us feel like this is not natural, meaning you're born into the sin and you, you have to do all of this and do all that. First of all, this is what you get to do. You don't have to do anything. Nature gets it anyway, meaning nature, universe will run its course. Just you breathing makes you a highway for spirits. People don't understand when they yawn, someone else is yawn. Spirits transferring. Spirits are ethereal. They move through air. They're Aryans. Ghosts. See, so what happens is, is that because there's so many different kinds, depending upon which ones were encountered, is the popular agenda of the individuals who have at least been to that level of coming back and telling you what they've experienced in these planes that have been more distorted by their own psyche and programming that they have still not deprogrammed from. Meaning, many of these spiritual leaders are still coming with the non-cohesive message. And what you're here to do is to throw a flag on that. Because when that passes to the children, it equals another generation of being stuck because it's the highest thing. See, many people, if you want to understand the control point, it's not money. It's spirituality. It's not land. It's spirituality. Meaning, what happens here is that if you see the, the Jews, and especially the ones in Israel, because they understand the Merkabah, because their language is a Merkabah, what they show you is that they're supreme masters over physicality. That's why they don't have any problems, really, with money and physicality. Okay? And we can talk days and days about how that knowledge got into their hands, but that will be saved for another show. But what we're showed just from that level is, is that mastering physicality has nothing to do with whether you're good or evil. Because if it was going to be the end for you because you were evil, there would have been the end for a lot of these people a long time ago. And if it was going to be the beginning for you because you were good, it would have been the beginning for you a long time ago. There's another integer, meaning that there's something else that we must look into. We must not stop at one thing and think we figured it all out and now I've found the perfect place that I want to be. <laughs> Look at how erroneous these statements really sound when you haven't seen everything yet. How can you come to a conclusion of what you want with what has been presented to you thus far? So what is you're being invited into is to see the myriad. This is how the third eye really works. Several convex triangles, which are triangles with curves that mesh over the reality so that you can see what other type of entities exist in your immediate frequency and space. 
when you relocate and go into different fields, the fields change. Just to let you know even more that you got more to go. The glass is half full. Even every day going into a third eye experience, the field has changed because the astronomical situation has clicked again, showing you once more that the glass is half full. So while you have all these people running around draining their own energy under the programs, release yourself from that and load something new. See, you have to be able to go into yourself like that. You cannot look at yourself to the point where, I guess people just, like I say, disbelievers block their own way. They lock themselves out of anything that they would be able to do with yourself. You can program yourself. <laughs> You can go into your own firmware. You can hack it. You can activate to superhuman strength and propel yourself through this entire existence and never have a problem. You will always have a buffer between you and the, and the lower frequencies because you've created that buffer by simply going into the higher frequencies. There are many things that exist here, but the only thing that doesn't allow us to see them is because, one, we think we're alone. When you notice with the child, the child will sometimes have a special friend. This is how you can get the other simple version of how to explain why when we think we're alone, everything disappears. What happens is, is that you see the child has a special friend. Now, we find out the special friend is really there. What it is, if you read Dr. Baldwin C.V.'s book, uh, Dr. Uh, William Baldwin, the book titled C.V. C.E.V.I., what it is is a, a familiar, a writer, from the past life, something who has tracked the biorhythm or light from the other being into this existence. But because it's born as a baby, this other being has to wait until the person gets to the age of knowing, which I believe is 13, so that, that's the bar mitzvah, so that it can fully interact with the child or then now what's going to be an adult, and then explain to it its connection. So what happens is, is that, if you notice, when this child has a special friend that says, oh, uh, Snooky said that he doesn't want me to eat ice cream, right? And so the parent's like, honey, there's nothing there. And then after that happens for a prolonged period, mainly two to three, four years it takes to get rid of Snooky, then the, first, the, late, the girl says, it's gone. I don't, I don't see it anymore. <laughs> because... That's what happens. So what we're allowing you to do is also to understand that your third eye is a refracting lens. It has the ability to focus and unfocus. You can now use it to focus on what you need, not what's going on in the reality. Do not use your third eye to focus on what's going on in the reality. So this is the, these are the teachings that have to come forth. Of course, things will be a lot more cohesive as we continue but we're already on an amazing journey. And what's just been the most expansive about this is that we've had the opportunity to share this. Once it's pushed out, nothing can stop it. The ripple effect goes out and can be listened through across space. 200, 300,000 years from now, what you say will still be heard. But what you say, did it have meaning? That's what we're talking about now. We're talking about living lives of full meaning, rich lives, embroidered lives, to where your every day is packed with a multi-layered experience rather than just a sheet, a bleached white sheet for you to write on with a non-creative mind or a mind that has already been rudimentary, rudimentarily fixed to the building blocks of a square reality. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if the panel is ready to push forth some of these questions that, uh, that have been accumulating. We do have a spot now on the resistance where you can come in and you can put a question there, and at some point it will get answered, either today or on Sundays in the 2012 show, or it will get answered on our Skype chat which we do a life coaching chat every Wednesday, you may want to take advantage of that. I mean, just jewels have continuously been put forth there. We haven't got a chance to upload any of those recordings yet because we always go for at least three hours. But it's one of those spaces where it's not the monologue with me just giving it to you, but it's also 
where you're there giving it back, understanding and cycling it so I know what you need to hear. Now, I wanted to answer this really this question really quick about DMT, and then I'm going to let Crystal come in and, and see what she's got to say to us, or maybe Wes. But Master Number 22 had asked, about the DMT thing. He says that, you know, he really wants to try it, but uh, didn't we say in the code that you've been put on this dimension for a reason and all other dimensions, you don't need to really be focusing on that? Yes, I did. But guess what? I found out the reason I was here on the dimension, and I completed that task, and now I'm off to other things while still cycling and giving that energy that I do receive from these other expanses back into the dimension after it's been filtered. So that is what has happened. I've definitely spanned out into much more of what has been going on in this existence, this beautiful experience. And I will also say, because the finishing of that question, it says, in the way of the shaman, they explain how... In ordinary reality, the shaman can basically go into ecstasy without any kind of drug. You're right, because all of what a shaman uses is not a drug. Non-binding is, I believe, is the term with uh, dimethyltryptamine, which is you can feel it in the experience. It's not something after you're done. Even when ayahuasca, when you're done, you don't immediately say to the person next to you, oh, man, I'm ready to go back in. It's not that kind of thing, because this is also where drugs come in. Like, with certain drugs, after the drug is complete, you're ready to get high again. DMT and ayahuasca is not like that. You have to sit and reflect for a while on what just happened. And then for days and days on end, maybe months, you may even have it there and look at it, and you may shiver like, oh, the other, the other realm is readily available right there on the shelf. But you will see exactly where your clutch point is, meaning that within most humans, when you do give them the opportunity to finally do something, they will come up with a million reasons why it's not time for them. <laughs> like we're t trying to tell everyone today, it's time now. All the information is here. All you have to do is really, shoot, you can go work at McDonald's for three months. You can uh, probably go and stay in efficiency during that McDonald's working. Then you could take the money from there and head right off to some place like Costa Rica, Peru, or whatever, and then go ahead and start your journey. And then from that point, trust me, the energies that are coming across right now, they'll be able to assist you in every single way and allow you to, you to expand into more of understanding and understanding exactly who you are. That's how it works. Every person that I know that has made themselves truly available not the, <laughs> they, I, I always use this gesture like tapping the foot into it, uh, or you know how some person may put their foot out real quick and then draw it back really quick. Maybe I should go, I don't know. And then that, doing that doesn't get results. So that is set up as a safety barrier between you and results. So here's the other thing. With much of the spiritual expanse, it's a one-time thing, meaning that once it happens, things are never the same again. So you do have to sit and really focus and put intention in what you're doing. There are many things in this reality that, such as marijuana, alcohol, you can do it, and then the next day, you know, you'll, you can recover. However, DMT is not like that. It doesn't play that kind of game. And that's why it also has it in itself a protective barrier that keeps people that do not need to experience it, 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 it eludes them. And if that's been happening to you where it has been eluding you, and even ayahuasca has been eluding you, the grandmother, is because you need to get more serious. You need to understand what this really means for you, not everyone else, not all of Britain, <laughs> not all of the different sects and countries. You've got to get to another level before you start to have those as, that as your projection situation that you have to fix. So this is what we're talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and let Krista come in. Hey, it's Wes. Oh, Wes. Um, yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. And, um, you know, there's, uh, it, it just kind of like, I know that Crystal and I are going to embark on our own ayahuasca journey soon. And, um, I just wanted to really add to that a little bit that, um, as far as we understand it, you know, 
DMT is is kind of more like uh, kind of a high speed train through various levels of consciousness without you know someone really knowing what he or she is experiencing. Um, and the question is if you know they're more calibrated to receive those experiences. Um, you know, I say it's you know with DMT it depends what you're looking for. It's either kind of a question of wanting to take a 50 minute spiritual thrill ride, um, or or doing something deeper and and you know it's it's something that we believe that you know going with the ayahuasca which is derived from DMT because that itself is you know like an 8 to 12 hour spiritual journey that allows you to rid yourself of all the karma stored inside of yourself um for not only this lifetime but from others as well and so you know to transform yourself uh and better your spiritual condition it just creates that balance and really kind of the foundation uh, that's really needed for all of us at this time. And if you're not in good spiritual condition, then, you know, it may not be a very fun experience to do the DMT. Uh, so I think being balanced is vitally important. And I think, you know, the only true way is like going to the, um, pardon the play on words, the root of the problem and, uh, root of the issue and doing the ayahuasca and purging yourself, um, to attain that balance. So, you know, to reach the altered states of consciousness, um, you know, as explained in the way of the shaman, even using simple drumming techniques uh, can train the mind to those altered states. And, you know, I know you can speak uh, from experience uh, with the use of mantras, um, although you don't really condone that method very much. Um, the indigenous people of the world have been using various plants uh, as spiritual tools for quite some time. And, you know, the DMT taken alone by smoking puts an individual, you know, on, I think on that kind of high-level speed train through those various levels, you know, so it's... Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely something that, um, you know, you have to know what you're doing. But at the same time, I mean, as Luis, you know, Luis is really also the big-time expert on this, and we talk a lot about it. And the reality is also it's... For certain people who have very aggressive lives, because of course he deals with also a lot of people who have really been getting the the bitter end of the matrix itself, especially when it comes from you know in the streets and different things like that that people here in our our locale are experiencing. So right. what he's also found out is that when some of those people venture out into basically utilizing such substances, they have that vibrational frequency change that allows them to go back into whatever they were doing and shut it down. Because in many cases, they've been wanting to shut it down anyway. When there is something that is higher that is available, by because of the kind of beings that we are, we naturally gravitate towards that. But if it's painted to us, as it's painted to many of the people that are that are in the lower frequencies, if it's painted to them that that lower frequency is the only frequency that is available and it's actually the best frequency, and then you see why later on anyone that goes to a high level is has come from those frequencies, even if it's take multiple lifetimes. Uh, this is built from the ground up. Even our body has been built from the ground up with us accelerating through states of consciousness as different entities. We can only shut the door on ourselves when we cease to recognize that that is what has always been happening. It's cyclic. We're not looking at an end. We can't look at an end. You see, so imagine if, if people started thinking, it, start becoming afraid of it not being an end. <laughs> that would be a lot more maddening probably than a person being afraid that there is an end. You see what I mean? Because one, you can, re you can undo. The other one, you can't. You see what I mean? Humanity has been programmed to believe that there is an end. That can be undone. But once humanity understands that there is no end, that you have to be ready to flow then because you free up. It's almost like there is no summertime, wintertime, birthday, Christmas, these mile markers that we give ourselves to kind of gauge where we're at in time. Because no one started using these clocks first, so they only started when the first person set one, meaning that nothing as far as these, these, uh, these times are accurate except from a level of how we're keeping them. What is more accurate is definitely the star system. 
But the star system in itself, as many have pointed out, are showing anomalies that NASA just comes back and says, oh, that happens every 20 years. And then you're trying to remember 20 years ago as you saw it during the week that it's taken place. There's impossible, it's impossible for you to realize, unless you're watching the sky every night, to authenticate whether the information is true or not. So, and then those who do penetrate all the way through it, like, uh, actually, I own a, a laboratory, and we've been monitoring the stars, and 20 years ago on this date, we did not see such an anomaly in the sky. And they'll write that to NASA, and then NASA will write back and say, well, there could be a, possibly a misprint. We're going to get into that a little bit deeper. <laughs> you see, there, there's, a, there's a wall there, because they know, like, look at the, what these planets are doing is they're pollinating each other. It's very simple. When they get really close together, the lights from each of them emit onto each other's surface more than ever. And also that's why more lights are emitting onto Earth's surface more than ever. And we're being pollinated by the planets. Their energy and the essence in its, in its embryo, embryonic stage is being seeded into us. So that later on this year, the, those seeds would either have been choked out, grown up, into into um, bushes. Some may hit tree state. You see? So this is the planting begins this year, and that's why many that are really, really deep into the astronomy and even into the occult see this year, starting March the 13th, they actually say, is the beginning of life. They, is this, they just knew it as a day you could actually reset your life. A day that you can, a year that you can actually start over for real, where you could let go of all of the karma and baggage that keeps holding you back, and you don't even know what it is anymore. You see, like many people are already carrying this; they have this karma, and it causes certain things to happen in their life, and been causing things to happen in their life because Maat is acting out and the balance, the justice balances from things they've done in past life they don't even know about. So. In, even in this life, many people have practiced and dealt with certain things and didn't even know about what they were doing. And then they're like, oh, my goodness, I didn't know I was involved in that, but all the symbolism is everywhere. How do, what do I do? March the 13th, March the 22nd, choosing of the Easter, springtime, let the ram run for, let it be like a bull in a china house, let it break down all mirrors, old images of yourself, and get ready to go and run forth the wheel time and then realize your cyclic and break time stand outside of time then radiate your essence into all of the emanations of yourself which are everything in this reality to assist it so that it can grow until this field like until we see expansion for the planet don't leave this is what we've committed to. There's so much here. To leave here could not be better. It's almost, if you cannot access the experience here, I'm already telling you, it is here. There's not good chances that you will be able to access it somewhere else. It's all a matter of timing. An egg has a certain period of time before it hatches. There's nine months in the gestation process. So these finite time systems show us that time is alive in itself, meaning that we cannot neglect what is going on with the conjunctions because they've already been showing and proving that that is what they master and know how to do, meaning during a certain time of the year, the trees are fruitful. That probably would be the time to plant. And then during a certain time, everything's barren, everything's gone underground. That would probably be the time to go inside and understand. So when we reintroduce the universal system into this world, it will, create, it, will, it will correct its wobble. This is what has been going on. It's not just me. Many people are doing this without talking because there is another thing the gentleman is right about. There is another level of energy that you can use when you're not talking because talking is out into the world and it expels energy. However, this new version of the human has the ability to expel energy and charge up at the same time. They call that singer. A sing. To singer. Okay, now, look at all the ing words. This is the year of the ing. I don't, I don't know completely what ing means, but I'm going to prove overall 
that there's something about Ing, which is actually one of the largest trading stock market names of the largest trading stock market company almost in the world. There's something about that name. Because you see, Ming, if they were showing you in Flash Gordon, was the basically the Chinese empire. And how even though all these Atlantean groups, the Africans with all the gold, the Vulcan, Vulcans went over there with the axes, even though they had all these groups, they were still one that had kept them all under sway. Meaning, let them have conflicts with one another, and then they will miss the grand picture of this. And this is why I started studying to understand that there are armed malevolent beings here, and they do attempt to keep humanity under control, because humanity is more powerful than them. So once humanity graduates beyond the state of them, they cease to exist because it's a frequency thing, which is something that the universe governs. And they don't govern the universe, <laughs> thankfully. People need to think about that. So this is, this is where we, all we have to do is understand we just reach beyond this, but inside. See, most people, when they think reach beyond, they immediately go out and they even arc. They see an arc in their mind and they see something just going over into something. No, 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 no. You've got to do it inside. And this is what DMT allows one to do. All of what they're seeing is inside. So, of course... If there's a lot of darkness inside and a lot of non-discovered things and closed doors and altered states and things that haven't been tapped back into, stuff that's been open from horror movies and different things, there could be an interaction with that when you're going through your experience. Now, this is why, uh, this is why ayahuasca in itself is on a different level when it comes to comparing them to, to the two between ayahuasca and DNT because ayahuasca knows how to take you through those experiences and be, allow you to work out and purge that experience, meaning that you will see it come out in your throw-up. Like many people have these ancient traditions of understanding when something dark and negative was really removed from the body, the physical, and it stuck. And then the person would feel the, the weight come off of them. And that's why we talk about these colon cleansing people. This is very simple. You just have to lose some time, the Prince of Persia attitude about everything, and just think about it. There's not, it's, it's mystical, and there's genies, and there's all of that, but there's also very practical. Like, we've already overlaid this entire reality with numbers, so that lets you know how practical it was. The Egyptians were masters at numbers, or the Kometans were masters at numbers, beyond what anyone is even talking about today. See, Carl Monk, C-A-R-L-M-U-N-C-K, Carl Monk's The Code. And he shows you, he's a master at math, and he shows you how it's all mathematics. But, you know, not to get too far off the topic here, because I guess it is the topic. But all, I'm, all I can do is just continuously explain to people about something that is available for them. But what you will notice, just beyond all of this, is exactly how much ha effort has to be put into that. Meaning that a lot of effort has to be put into convincing humanity to stop its destruction. Even on a personal level, where it's up to you now. Just clean it out of your system. So, that gives us the speed to this whole thing. It's not just that, it's like people want to die. <laughs> the, being, the beings here want to see the end. So, we're in here to change that. You would think offering them endless opportunities would be something everyone would jump to, but that is not it. It's binded in the mind, so that's why people have to understand how to work with people on a different level now, working with them through, through the essence, working with them through understanding what the language is really saying about them when they talk, hearing what they're really saying. Because there's like uh, two ways you can listen to what anyone's saying. It's funny because when you really sit back and you listen to what a person is saying, there's two ways always. You can turn it into a completely different thing. And so... These are the pointers that give you more expansion. It allows you to navigate your mind, body, and soul. I was going to say just the psyche, but it's beyond that. It gives you the tools to navigate your mind, body, and soul. So just to be direct and clear, there are strata, walls of mucoid plaque in the colon region, which is responsible for colonizing or basically fungundating your entire system, 
It's the soil for your body. Many people think the colon is the dirtiest thing, and I don't even know. <laughs> it's just our waste system. No, 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 no. It's our fertilization system. So what's in that strata, that's why I said you got good bacteria and you got bad bacteria. It's always bad in the dual environment. And, like, Acidophilus is the good one. So in your, I guess the word I'm looking for is what you would call, like, the rich soil that people use to plant and, and to plant with. In that inside of you, cultivate that properly so that your seeds grow. For men, understand and understand you are birthing babies all the time when you're cohabiting with women. They are inner it is a conception. They also do take nine months or nine months of dream time to gestate. It is a very, it's very imperative that they be shown the path properly. You're always being watched. Aborted babies are still around. So this is still, like I said, it's a deeper thing. I can explain it from different kinds of levels get scientific, I can get spiritual, I can run all the way around here like Indian man and tear things up like Pentecostal. Whatever way people need to hear it, <laughs> it's all basic. It's energy, pure energy. This is what you need. You need full rejuvenation of your cells. If you do it on a physical level, it will run into all corresponding levels, making you at the control point. Meaning that if you ascend the body in this state, there is a great reward. Because there are so few that have accomplished it, there's always been, for hard tasks, an abundant reward set up behind it. The universe has to pay. The universe doesn't mind pain. That's the other thing. When you get tapped into universal energy, it gives you that energy back. And more so that you can go out and do even more. It likes a doer. So this is where people have to just switch. Another gentleman asked a question about why things appear backwards. Like good is bad and in the dream, bad dreams equal good things in the reality, etc. It's because you have to switch your polarity. Like when the moon's getting stronger, bad things happen to you. That means your polarity's on the wrong angle. When the moon's getting stronger, more aggressively things should be happening good for you. And then when it's on the wane, basically you're internal. It doesn't even damage you. Because you're on these aggressive sides of the moon. So this is the things that, again, that people, you can replay this message. You can take notes. You can write down. We skip around a lot. But that's so you can have key points to focus on rather than the entire story that comes beyond and behind that point. Because that's for you to to unravel for yourself. We give the gift of everything is inside. If you understand, like some people have a certain thing inside the box that they want to give you. Religion says, well, if you come with us, we'll give you, and they have it laid out in a deed. They even want you to do a ritual on it. So, what this is, is giving the gift, and it's like now these new gift cards. They just, it's like just money. You don't do what you want to do with it. So what I'm saying is it's just currency. It's the real current. It's not the foolish alchemy of money. It's the real thing. So now you go forth and you do in this time what you want with it. And and that's, like I said, it's just, to me, it's a beautiful gift given. And the reason why I'm giving it is because it was given to me. And that's, and that's really where I'm at. And it's worked wonders in my life. Like, people can see my life went through a complete transformation. Like, people don't even really have never heard really my story. And I guess there will be a time and place for that at some point. But people even see mug shots of me. Like, I didn't have a life that was all roses where I was just was a smart kid. I was that inside of the rubble. And I worked through the rubble and dragged others from the rubble, and that's what we're here. Like, when you can get strengthened from that, the tree is strong. It can hold many in its branches. And this is what we're supposed to do so that they can grow up and fly on. It's almost like there is an entire support system because we all have a role where we can live through each other. Once we link back into that, and I was going to also show, even in, even in this reality that we live in now, I am a part of your consciousness. And somebody say, well, wait a minute, that's, 
that's strange. What are you saying? You're, you're inside of me, or what are you talking about? Well, it, minus the spooky stuff, because you tune in and we share this connection, I'm sharing conscious information, so thus I'm a part of your consciousness. I reside there. So this is why also we become as leaders to people, and, and we each start to become leaders in each other's mind, because you can set up stations, waypoints in your mind that are accessible, like you have friends and family here on the resistance that are contributing certain kinds of information, because if you may find that more important than, you know, who the great red dragon is or, you know, something of this nature, you may find what gestation cycle of pregnancy that you need to, to really be taking certain supplements. You may be into that, and that's why we have to have people at every station on this ship. And that's why I say when they told the Noah, I guess the Noah guy to build the ship, you're the Noah. Build the ship. And always remember, the pilot is not the main guy. The captain is. So let's us, let us uh, do that. So I'm gonna, we have 17 more minutes in the call. I'm going to ask callers that if they do have a question, because we want to give people an opportunity to call in, and, of course, we'll answer more of those questions that are available on the site now to me, probably on Wednesday. But if you have any questions, you can call in to area code 347 nine nine six five six eight eight and you can press one and we can get those questions answered also if you're in the queue as a caller you can also press one and uh... i'm going to go ahead and, and take it over to west and let it go to west or crystal at this moment because i don't really see anyone in the in the queue but to take a moment get a little bit of water here and then we're going to when we come forward i'm going to talk a little bit more about this the cyclic versus linear, and how once we switch our minds to that, then we have access to this abundant energy. Okay, we're on. Uh, I guess we have uh, our next question for a solution in, uh, from Melissa for cleaning the water, but um, wondering about the air in the homes. And when it comes to uh, the question of the body's alkaline, then when we breathe in this air and it's absorbed into the lungs and it goes into the blood. Um, well, you we touched on a few things with, with the internal environment and um, the chemtrails and uh, the fact that there's uh, a zone tech uh, air purification. I mean, from what we understand, I mean, when you're talking about chemtrail interference, uh, air purification is i mean i don't know this for sure but i'm pretty sure it's kind of pointless because a lot of the chem, um the particles in chemtrails are are kind of nano uh level so extremely small uh beyond micro level and so small that most filters aren't able to catch and trap those small particles so um the reality is there's just some things that you're going to have to be exposed to and you have little initial power over but that doesn't mean you can't take steps to counteract the problem um, you know, like we Seven always says, and, and we agree to MMS uh, Miracle Mineral Solution is always really essential for purifying the blood uh, in terms of the aftermath of things, and it also gives uh, the body a high alkalinity at the same time. So, doing a heavy metal cleanse is also a really good uh, thing to do because there are a lot of heavy metals uh, in chemtrails, especially if you're living by a heavy chemtrail region. Um, which, you know, obviously most of us are. Um, the heavy metal cleanse is really good at ridding that toxicity. Um, there's an Ayurvedic blood purifier uh, as well that you can really uh, get an advantage with uh, on the code. You can find that in the, the tools as well. So kind of going with, you know, those kind of supplements instead of the air purification is, is I would think, the better way to go there. Um, and obviously everything that you can kind of cut down from electronic devices like the TV, microwave, and cell phone, um, you know, really bring uh, the breakdown the mind and the physical body, just cutting that, those down to a minimum. Obviously, we touched on organite uh, uh, here and there, but definitely uh, one of the best things to transmute negative frequencies into positive ones. So if you can just get a little pyramid, put it by the TV, it can pretty much do about a seven to 900-foot radius in the room and, and take care of all that stuff. So 
that would be what I would say for the uh, the frequency end of things. As far as the smoking, we they touched on cigarette smoking a bit. I mean, there's really, uh, I think, no real good answer there except to kind of get rid of the smoking. <laughs> yeah, smoking's <laughs> you know, uh, super toxic. It's just no way around it. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's not just, the, obviously, the, the pollution that you can see inside the home, but, I mean, in terms of, you know, the etheric level, um, you know, there's so many negative energy entities that reside in polluted air, period. And, you know, I can't even imagine with cigarette smoking, with all the, especially with all the chemicals they have inside of them today, um, you know, it's just an etheric nightmare and definitely has not just a, a, a huge effect on the smoker, but everyone living with that smoker. For sure. I did, we did have a question here in the, in the chat box from Cosmic Brownie. Says if there are soul pieces missing, is there any chance to get whole with ayahuasca rather than a shaman intervention? And are there other ways to get whole? And I will first of all say that we are always whole. Just even in the concept that every part of the hologram does contain the copy of the whole, meaning that it's within us. What is at question now is whether you understand or understand exactly how to access it. So. The shaman intervention with ayahuasca, you're the shaman. Like, it's the shaman's just there to make sure it just doesn't get out of control. But generally, they're there, and they're singing a song, and or they're, they're dancing, or they're, they have the rattle, or they're tending the fire or something, just to make sure that the frequency stays fixed. Because while many people are purging, you'll see in many cases people bring up something <laughs> like very similar to negative energies. And, well... Directly, their negative energies that the person is bringing up, and because ayahuasca involves a purging versus DMT, <laughs> it's the businessman's jump gate to the universe. So it's like <laughs> it's it's amazing to me just how something like that would even be available. But the reality is is that it's two totally different things. One lasts like all night. It's an intricate thing. You're you're purging. You're connected, and then you know you feel different things that are moving through you, and you see certain situations that you should have um, you should have rectified. But then generally after the session, it will re it releases you into a freer state. Right before, I mean, even within the somewhat of the altered state of consciousness of ayahuasca, where some people have definitely reported having the out-of-body experience and then seeing many of the other layers that do exist here on Earth and other beings that were a lot more numerous moving around, and they were aware of us, but they weren't necessarily needing to interact with us directly. And so there's been many, many stories of, and these, these are coming from individuals that haven't even been on the, the ayahuasca trip several times, but maybe their they're first or second time. So it's really, it's completely tailored for the individual. And that's really the thing. DMT, there's no tailoring because there's no clothes, for better lack of words. It's, it's a whole different thing. And so it's more really one for the depth versus the – I wouldn't even say that the ayahuasca is not for the depth either, though, because it's just a different thing. And so entirely. And so what I would say is that the shaman interventions, generally the shamans are there anyway. So it's not like – you you have the shaman and he's like trying to exercise you or something. That's generally not how the the whole the whole ceremony works. Generally, they do a slight purification, maybe with some sage or things of this nature. Maybe they use tobacco at times to to purify the area or as an offering to the earth. I will say that what I've discovered is that you can see really what the relationship is with much of these elements and things by their color. If you notice that with tobacco, the brown tobacco is uh, really good for the lower areas of the body, and that's why all the indigenous, even all the way up until this day, in even the, um, you know, the, the so-called higher societies, they still know to do enemas with tobacco, because that entire area down there, of course, is brown, and for some reason it gives, it, it basically fertilizes that area. Um, and so... You can see how many of these elements match, but a cigarette, of course, just to finish that off, is a totally different thing. Like, there's only a certain percentage of that that is tobacco, and then the rest is chemicals. I used to call it just the serpent's incense. It does bring around a certain type of entity, and it does hold, because if you notice the difference between, in many cases, marijuana smoke versus uh, cigarette smoke is marijuana smoke will go away while the cigarette smoke lingers and then gets soaked into things. So that type of 
perception you always have to pay attention to because these are just like your core senses telling you which one will work, which one won't. Like we talked to some people have been asking the big question about marijuana, its effects, and whether it's positive or negative for spiritual progress, and which, you know, which uh, substances are positive or negative for the spiritual progress because everyone has some type of, or not everyone, but many people have some type of addiction or something that they're dealing with. And many of the more spiritual people always have something that they are doing or addicted to because even meditation can be an addiction if you want to use that term. Addiction just means something that you do over and over for gratification, even to the point where it becomes harmful for you. Look at meditation. You can meditate so much and fail to come into the reality that do something really active, you can lose your house, lose your car, and everything. So it shows you that addictions are when you over, you, you have an over excess of something. But then you do have extremes, such as DMT is more of a spiritual extreme because it plunges you immediately into the spiritual world. Cocaine is also very aggressive because it immediately changes the frequency into a lower frequency. So notice most of the white powders, DMT drink comes out similar to a white or yellow powder. When things are broken down into that state, they have a tendency because of their potency to be a lot more dangerous. So this shows you the same thing. You can pack a hundred nights worth of partying in one tab of ecstasy or I ask it. You see what I mean? So, and then some people are doing that every night and aging themselves hundreds of years in one night. So this is because the potency of that acidic tab. And so that's where the alchemies and things come in and understanding how to work proper alchemy on your own body. Because there are other people that, especially with some of the more of the fermented brews that they create, like they have these fermented brews they create out of honey. There's one out of yucca. And they make them stronger as far as they have to work all day, and I've noticed some of the indigenous people, they have to work all day and chop down things all day, and they drink these maca slash fermented fruit slash drinks, and then they just get to it and handle their business. So you, that's their alchemy. So it's just all about the person that understands as an adept to, that they're the adult over themselves and that they have the responsibility of going into their body and, and pro prescribing the right thing, whether it's going out to Peru or whether it's climbing a mountain or whatever it may be, joining the gym, doing crystals. Now, whether it's, is there another way to get whole? That's the thing about wholeness. There's so many ways. It's a way for every person. That's what makes it universal. So you have everything from, I believe, a great deal of my intelligence came from crystal meditation. Just from laying there with the crystal, putting the crystal on my chest and falling asleep and stuff like that, I would get large amounts of information. And I didn't necessarily see that in a dream, but I just started becoming aggressively more tapped in, I would say. I became really receptive to what the environment was saying. And that's why I'm, I'm still amazed now that I, I see a lot of people writing about stuff that, like writing specifically about stuff that I've experiencing, experienced and then basically explain completely what was happening there. So, again, most people are now in this huge experience with themselves, and they're learning themselves and getting a chance to know themselves. So give yourself the opportunity to do that. We have about um, five more minutes left in the call. I am going to go ahead and take one more caller. Before I do that, I wanted to just send out wholeness and balance just in a, a very, very special way to a lot of the people that have been assisting the resistance, just from multiple levels. And they know who I'm talking about, and I don't really need to say names because then if I forget someone, then they'll be like, oh, man, you didn't say me. But there's just so many people working from all fronts that have pushed resources, time, energy into getting the resistance to this point. And it's really, really showing that it's doing what it does. We're picking up so many members every single day. The message is getting a lot more expansive. Sometimes when I do these hour-and-a-half phone calls, I do towards the end get a little bit uncohesive, but... I can definitely feel a lot of the energy pumping out in the beginning, and that's just so much to, to push that energy out. And then it starts to come back in just multiple ways through multiple channels. And that's also what I want to tell people is to keep yourself open for receiving information and receiving connections from different people, meaning that because we have so many portals open at the resistance, I've been able to experience a lot of people helping and just sending a book sometimes that I didn't see. And then it will be right at the person perfect time, and I'll read it, and then I'll 
get so much understanding on what's been happening in my life. So remember, this is an EverQuest. This is something that is going on continuously. It's not something that we just started doing and something that we're ever going to stop doing. So I just say that the resistance in itself, as far as what it's doing spiritually, physically, and mentally, is something that we don't see ending. We only see it as cyclic. So I'm going to take this last caller from the area code 336. Caller, you're on the 2012 show. Uh, yes. How are you doing today? High vibrations. This is Double O Cosmos. All right. High vibrations. And uh, I had a question on dealing with reincarnation. Um, is it possible for uh, a child to be reincarnated with two different mothers, I mean, two different parents from another life? Like well, you have in, in reality, what you'll see is, is that because there is a connection, it, with this, it's, sim it's very pyramidal when we're talking about the archetype mother and the archetype father because when you keep going back, from grandmother to grandmother to grandmother, great-great-grandmother, when you keep going back, you eventually get to a village of people. So that's why the whole mystery between even Mary holding the baby in her hand or uh, Isis holding the baby in her hand or Inanna holding Tammuz in her hand, the whole secret is, is that she's still holding her husband and her son and her father because they all still have to come out of the same womb. So it's highly possible for the child to connect with two consecutive life streams of mothers that it has experienced. Yes. Okay, yes, because I was, uh, in, I'm in a relationship, and uh, the mother has a daughter who uh, actually looks like me, and we have a great bond, and I was just trying to figure out, could that be a child through a past life, since I can't have children on this run? Um, so that's why I was asking that question. Well, I mean, just in the position of a father, I think that that's something that you can actually accept as your responsibility. I mean, I just see that, you know, there's many ways that the universe shows us what we have to do. I will show that basically all of these children are our children. I will show that in the most amazing way. So I did get that information that, you know, if you, you'll you see that connection on different levels. I saw it in one way, and, and I'm sure you may be seeing it, but you know that you can step in there and you can you can uh fulfill that because I was just talking about this morning we were I was having a conversation about you know the woman having to experience the father in her life also is very very important we were having that exact conversation so it just it runs it kind of completely cyclic today because that ended but we only have one more uh, 30 more seconds on the call I want to say thank you to everyone holds and balance vibration I want to say to the panel thank you uh, for participating as always. And, brother, I do want to thank you for calling in, Double O Cosmos. I definitely got a lot of your emails, and it's awesome to always hear from you and to connect. I want to let everyone know we got a lot more going on this week. Everything is getting organized in a major way. I wanted to say thank you, especially to Joseph for helping me with that, and also Wes and Crystal for helping me with that, and Luis out there. And, uh, that's it. So we're going to be. And I, uh, Seven, if I may, I don't know if we touched on it, but uh, I just want to let uh, everybody know that uh, Seven's going to be on American Freedom Radio Thursday, April 5th, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern, so don't miss it. Uh, the last show was amazing. I'm going to go nuts on that show. You might want to tune into that show. I might. I'm going to have to wake America up and show them what freedom truly is. Yeah, it, 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 just personally from hearing uh, almost every show you've ever done, I mean, uh, we can both easily say that that last radio show on American Freedom Radio is one of the best we've ever heard. Uh, really mind blower. So uh, be sure to check it out. For sure. All right. So we've expired time. So I'm going to go ahead and let everyone. I'm going to go ahead and end the session so those that are trying to listen to the archives can listen. We do ask you to press one if you can after this recording because it does allow this show to be ranked and it does allow it to appear on Blog Talk Radio. So that allows in the front page of Blog Talk Radio. So that allows a lot more people to see us. Thank you again and wholeness. Wholeness. <laughs>